to grant another Brexit delay. The UK is due to leave the EU this Friday, currently without a deal. The Prime Minister, Theresa May, visited President Macron here in Paris today. She was also in Berlin to speak to Chancellor Angela Merkel. She's trying to get them to back her request for a delay until June 30th. That will be the second delay, of course. EU leaders will convene tomorrow for the EU summit and according to a draft statement they are willing to grant another delay provided Britain participates in next month's European elections and there are reports that uh, EU leaders would like a much longer delay uh, even to the end of the year. Well here to talk about all of that uh, I'm joined in the studio by Professor Robert Frank. Uh, he's a professor of history and international relations at the Sorbonne University uh, here in France, and uh, you've written a book about uh, Britain and Europe's tortuous relationship over the centuries it in is. French, I understand. Uh, so that is very uh, relevant uh, as well. And, and I suppose, you know, this whole painful, convoluted Brexit process is, is kind of a reflection of Britain's long standing, ambiguous relationship with Europe, isn't it? Yes, <clears throat> these relations are very ambiguous since uh, three centuries, I would say. The, this matter of in and out, this uh, hesitation, are the British uh, in Europe, are they out of Europe, that stands since uh, three, three, three centuries. So nothing new. Maybe one thing is new. All this in and out uh, stuff, uh, all this in and out uh, affair was uh, controlled by the British. Since 2016, nothing is controlled. They don't, don't, don't control any, anything, and it's, uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a mess. And maybe that is the explanation. Uh, you have a, a, a very deep political crisis in, in, in Britain because of that, because of this, uh, uh, because of, of this, of, of this mess. Uh, one thing is clear now today: uh, everybody is fed up with the Brexit. Uh, <laughs> everybody yes, is fed up with the Brexit <laughs> in, in, on the continent, in the EU, and yes. also in in, in Britain. Uh, on all sides. And if you go back uh, to 2016. Um, Europe was not uh, the number one issue for British voters. It was not something that, that people were particularly worried about. Um, this was about internal uh, politics for the Conservative Party. Uh, it was all about taking back control, restoring Britain's sovereignty and these very romantic campaign slogans. But undeniably, Britain today, as a result of this process, is weaker on the world stage and inside Europe. Britain is weaker. And one thing the Brexiters did not understand is that the people who voted remain, they knew what they were voting for. The people voting for the leave do not know what they're voting for, because there's many ways of Brexit, a soft Brexit, a hard Brexit. There's one or two possible soft Brexits. There's one or two possible hard Brexits. And that, that's the problem with, with the Theresa May. There's no compromise possible. And the, the crisis will be very deep. And that, that is new. What is not new is, is always the, the same thing. The Brits are completely European, much more than we French think. They are much, much more European than we think. But they feel themselves apart. So when they're in Europe... Is that a geographical thing, do you think, or...? I would say it's a very long run or affair. Else? When they're in Europe, they're uneasy, and they're looking their way out. And when they're out of Europe, it's worse. They want to come back because they don't want to be marginalised. And that's why the, the, it will be a, a long-run saga. It's, it's, it's not finished. And, uh, I mean... Britain has always resisted deeper integration. It rejected the euro, of course. It has balked at the idea of uh, European defence forces. Um, the, you know, the British leadership is the complete opposite of President Macron, who is pushing for deeper European integration. Is it better for the European project that Britain is out? Maybe. Some think that. It's difficult to, to answer, because Europe, without Britain, it will be a weaker Europe. In many, in many, in many fields, but on the other hand, uh, the European Union without Britain will be able to, to change, will be able to, to to reform itself. That's why Emmanuel Macron is not so keen to give a, a delay. Maybe he will give a delay. He's not so keen of that because he's fed up of the Brexit. And but we are wasting time with the Brexit. There's much, much ado to, to, to much more to be done. Much more, more to, to be done. Uh, so, so maybe if Europe maybe changed 
uh, thanks to the Brexit, well, maybe Europe will be better. And if Europe is better, maybe it will come back. And the whole Brexit process has provided a rather useful uh, lesson uh, for the EU, uh, a lesson to the re remaining members of the European Union, that it would be too difficult to try leaving. So perhaps don't bother doing that. That's a big paradox. Uh, that's maybe what the, the Brexiters underestimated. It's the, the, the final the strength of the European Union. The European Union is much stronger than the British Union, <laughs> than yes. the United Kingdom. Uh, because the Scots Not so are United the, the, Kingdom right now. And what happens, you see the, all the populists on the continent do not want to get out of Europe. And the Brexit shows that they're right and it will be so difficult to get out of, of, the, of the European Union. So the uh, Marine Le Pen's, the Matteo Salvini's, the Victor Orban's, they're not talking about... Not talking about, it, and that's maybe the, the contradiction that you can stress. It's, uh, of course, they have a policy to, to, to break the Union, the European Union, but then the, the question that can be asked, well, if you want to break the Union, why don't you get out of, of the Union? Why, why don't you have the courage to get out of the Union? If you don't have the courage, that means that the Union is stronger than, you, than we think. All right, Professor, thank you very much indeed, Professor you. Robert Frank there.